Against all odds, Edo State Deputy Governor Philip Shaibo has declared his intention to seek election into the governor's office under the, uh, on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. Uh, Christy McCauley reports. In series of crises leading to the declaration of the Deputy Governor. The event was earlier scheduled to take place in a hotel in the GRA in Benin, but was moved to Pastoral Center on Airport Road due to last-minute cancellation by the hotel owned by a top member of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the state. In spite of this, Philip Shaibu quickly made an alternative arrangement by securing another venue. Security was top-notched at the event. Therefore, I humbly seek your support, your trust, and your nomination in this upcoming election. As we embark on this journey together, united in our determination to make Edo State a better place for ourselves and generations to come. I am Philip Shaibu, your guy. You're 100% on boy. Together we will reignite Edo spirit and transform our tomorrow. Thank you. God bless the People's Democratic Party. God bless Edo State. And God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The state governor has not hidden his opposition to Shaibu's ambition. The last is yet to be heard on the wranglings between the deputy and his principal, Governor Baseki. Christy McCauley, Arise News. All right, like we promised you, let's uh, cross live to Benin now and speak to the deputy governor, uh, Philip Shaibu there. Good to see you on Newsnight. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, Thank almost eight much. years of being deputy governor of Edo State. Why do you want to be governor? Why are you seeking for the highest job in the state. Yeah, because my people wants me to contest and also uh, they need an own boy, an original 100% own boy to lead them. They need uh, people that can bring governance to their doorstep. And also, they also know that I have experience. I haven't worked uh, with uh, uh, Osumbo in the legislative arm and also worked with Comrade Adams of Shomole, also in the legislative arm. Now, working with Obaseki as deputy governor, I'm well equipped to understand what governance is all about, both from the legislative arm and executive arm. And also, uh, one of the advantages is that uh, the taxpayers of Edo State do not want me to just walk away and possibly uh, they still want to, to benefit from uh, the weight of knowledge that I've gained from uh, uh, government. And don't forget also that uh, Edo people need rapid and fast development now. They don't want somebody to come and learn on the job. And they know if I become the governor of Edo State from day one, from November 12, 2024, I will announce my commissioner. On the podium where I'll be inaugurated, I'll announce and swear in my secretary to the state government, announce my chief of staff, and the same day, my document will go to the House of Assembly with my commissioners, naming my commissioner and their portfolios for screening. Not just sending names to the state assembly, no, I will be naming my commissioners with the portfolio for screening by the Edo State of Assembly. And with that, with the rules that I'm aware of, of Edo State of Assembly, within one week of my inauguration, my ESCO will be constituted and will hit the ground running. And that is what Edo people want. They don't want people that will come and learn on the job. They don't want people, somebody that will come and does not know what they feel, what they understand. They want somebody close to them. They don't want, in quotes, the elites and with elite projects. They need own boy, they need street boy, they need somebody that can touch their life directly. And they know that I've always been with them. I felt that pain, and I'm always with them in terms of need, in terms of celebration, in terms of joy. In every moment, they know me. And so, they said I should contest, and I'm ready for it. 
Mr. Shaibu, uh, you say you're ready for the job, and it's a good thing that uh, you mentioned very, the fact very that. Ready. Right. You also mentioned that uh, you've learned, uh, or rather cooperated with your principal in the last uh, couple of years, uh, the current governor, Godwin Obaseke. Do you have his back in, in this race? Well, I will say yes and no. Yes, from uh, my relationship with him, working with him for seven years, I will say yes, because I know my governor likes somebody that is not corrupt. He likes somebody that is hardworking. He likes good getters. And he has commended me for having these qualities. And he has always said to me, Deputy, you are different. You are not like the conventional politician. And he has even commended me to the extent that he has told me, even written, signed, that I am the kind of deputy governor any governor wish to have as deputy king because I'm a I'm a solid ally to governance. So if he has said that, it then means that he's definitely going to be happy if I succeed him. But you know, politics has its own game. And uh, it's possible he also has his own plan. But nonetheless, I can assure you, whatever plan the governor has, when I win the primaries, the governor will support me because I know I can deliver and I can build on what we are collectively achieved and I can correct some of the things that we have not been able to do, and some of them that we have in plan. He knows that I know how we started it. He's aware that I have the blueprint of the 30 years master plan that we have, uh, we have started uh, to conservate, and he knows as a legislator there are some of these policies that will need legal backing. So I have combined honors when it comes to public uh, works. Legislator by excellence. Now I've learned in the executive arm with him. So bringing somebody else that does not have this quality in this economic crunch will be somebody coming to learn on the job. There are different between, there's different between public sector and private sector. Public sector is governed by law. Why private sector is governed by regulation. There are two different things. So you need a man that has the combination of public sector experience and private sector experience. So now that is the kind of person I do. People need somebody that have appetite, somebody that can reach out to the people, somebody that know what affect them directly. And I can bet you those qualities I have, and that is what is my selling point, experience. And they know me with practical governance because they know I feel them, they feel me, and I can tell what is affecting them positively or negatively. So right, I can tell you the to know, support. Um, yeah. uh, for, uh, of course, uh, experience does count. Forget but, about what, but you seem the, to have what is happening now is, is politics. Okay, uh, Mr. Philip Schweib, you, you, there, there seems to be uh, some obstacles or hurdles that you would need to cross. Number one, uh, the question of zoning. You come from Edo North. Uh, and of course, uh, the previous governor before Baseki was from Edo North. Uh, he's actually made a position, you know, known clearly, uh, saying that uh, the APC is not a rehabilitation center at, at a point when it looked like you were going to, uh, you know, jump ship. Do you have governor, previous governor Adams or Shomale's uh, support? Uh, how are you going to cross this hurdle, especially on the zoning issue? Well, I have never contemplated jumping to any ship. These are just propaganda, and it was a game to push me out. But unfortunately, uh, those that were that, that orchestrated that plan to push me out, they didn't know that uh, I'm somebody of uh, means, I'm somebody that is principled, I'm somebody that is, when I'm committed, I'm committed. And one of my selling points is my, uh, my loyalty. I can be loyal to to what some people say, you can be foolish in my loyalty. That, that is me because I'm a team player. I'm a team player. So because I'm a team player, people want to take advantage of my loyalty for granted. And I have experience in everything that had to do with human relations. And I was properly brought up. And because I'm properly brought up, 
and I'm a Christian. It, that is what had to my service. The issue of um, where the governorship is going, it's, it's all it's just gimmick. Somebody is sponsoring a group of person to say fairness, equity, and justice. And I say, what is fairness? What is equity? What is justice? When you want to know what is fairness and equity and justice, come to my office. It's only in my office in government house you have an Ishan, Benin, Esako, Akokuedo, Onwa, and even Igbo and Yoruba in my office. Go to any office in government house. You won't find that fairness and equity that they've been preached. And when it comes to the issue of uh, this election, Edo North is the only senatorial district that PDP has never given ticket since 1999. Esan has gotten ticket, Governor Osumbo. Benin have gotten ticket, Governor Lucky and Governor Baseki. So when you're talking about equity, fairness, and justice, the only senatorial district that have not been given ticket by the People's Democratic Party is a do not. And we are talking about equity and fairness. If we have sat in any conference to say we will be rotating, I will abide by that. Equity and fairness means that when Lucky Benedion was handing over, he handed over to Osumbo, from Osumbo to Shomole. Equity and fairness means that in 2016, and a central person should have been governor, not Godwin Obaseke and Philip Shaibu. So if we want to talk about equity and fairness, then in 2016 should have been Ishan Stone, not the stone of uh, the governor now. So if the governor is talking about equity and fairness, I agree with him, but the equity and fairness should have been 2016, not 2024. So that is the game. Now, Mr. So, Shabu. Uh, so when they, when, 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 when they, they, when they, you see, one thing about policies that I've seen that is interesting is when a group of persons have particular interests, they either come through ethnicity or through religion. I have never played ethnic politics or religious politics. I've always played politics of competence and politics of, of, of practical governance to the people. And that is what I'm bringing on board. And when I say I'm bringing experience on board, even the governor can attest to this. Because all the sector that I've handled in this government, check those sectors. They are the selling point of this government presently. And the government commended me in writing, signed, for my hard work, my diligence, my accountability, and I am a deputy governor, any governor we wish to have. Those words are strong. And so what is happening now, that's why I see it as policy. And I'm convinced, really. Mr. Shaibu, you, you're convinced to also ticket. that you're one and, deputy. And, no, convinced. I need, convinced. To come in, I need to come in here, Mr. Shaibu. You're convinced that you're one deputy yeah. governor that any governor will wish to have. Uh, we remember... A couple of months yes. ago, you, you had a rift with your principal. You asked for his forgiveness, and he did yeah. forgive you. So why are you back to what caused the yeah. rift between you? Ambition is personal. Loyalty is given. I am 100% loyal to my governor, and that is why he has been, he has, I've been intimidated, harassed. As I speak to you, my brother, I'm relocated from government house. I didn't go to court to check the legality of that action. That is loyalty. My uh, office, uh, uh, for the, this is the fourth or fifth month, no allocation has been, uh, has been, is been given to my office. And this evening, my aides told me that the governor has also instructed that the foil they used to give to my vehicle sh should no longer be given to the vehicle. So what, why, why all this? I wanted to do uh, uh, my um, uh, declaration today. A top senior office, uh, uh, office holder in government is calling the hotel to tell them they will revoke their license. My wife's business, they went to harass my, my wife's staff in the filling station. Why doing that? Why doing that? 
I cannot be intimidated. I can tell you I cannot be intimidated. If I didn't die during the Abasha era, I cannot die now. This democracy we are talking about today, I fought for this democracy. I was brutalized. Some of our guys didn't make it. I was detained in a plateau uh, 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 SSS center with General Dia and the alleged coup plotters during the Abacha era in fighting for this democracy. Why Kanu was doing Abacha man march in Abuja, I was with Ganifa and me and Beko doing Abacha must go in Yaba for this democracy. And I'm sure some of these players that are now in court, in leadership, some of them were not in the country. Some of them were somewhere enjoying themselves while we were on the street in Haley tear gas. If tear gas can cause cancer or whatever, I'm sure some of us won't be alive today just for this democracy. And why do we want democracy? We want government for the people by the people. That is what we want. We want people to be able to decide the destiny of their country. Today, Edo people are saying they want an Edo 100% boy. And I'm available for that. Right. So still no on the issue that. of... There um, people that will decide. Okay, so let, let's come in here very quickly. Still on the issue of your apology to Governor Basaki uh, weeks ago, where you said you were you know, totally loyal uh, to him. Are you taking that apology back uh, since, from all indication, it looks like you're being intimidated uh, you know, from uh, his end? And why do you think, by the way, that principals, governors don't want their... Uh, deputies to take over from them, uh, considering the fact, based on what you have said, that you performed or you've done excellently well. Why is Obaseki not supporting your bid? No, I, 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 don't say, I don't want to say governor. When you say governor, you are generalizing. generalizing. No, no, not governors. If, if I or she wanted to hand over to his deputy governor, in fact, he, he nominated and supported his deputy governor, though he didn't make it, but he wanted him. Uh, Kwan Kwaso no, uh, supported his deputy governor, the president APC national chairman, and the president APC national chairman supported his, uh, his deputy governor. And recently in his book, he also spoke about roles for deputy governor. So uh, these things are not, it's not, don't generalize, don't say governors, no. It's not like that. Some people have their own reason, like I said, uh, the governor has the right to support, it's his constitutional right to support or not to support. It's also my constitutional right to contest. It has nothing to do with loyalty. I mean, there's no need for intimidation. We've had the, the deputy governor of Edo State under Oshomole contested, but we supported the, 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 the present apology. governor. Are you Oshomole taking back? did not harass. Are you taking back your apology to him? Uh, because uh, it uh, seems, because the, he had said you uh, must the, step down on your bid to become uh, governor. Otherwise, the rift will continue. Uh, no, no. He cannot tell me to step down from my constitutional right. It's my right. The governor can't tell me step down. No. Politically, I am very matured. Former president of NANS. I was president of NANS in this country. I was a two-time majority leader in this state. I was a member of ASO representative. I am deputy governor. When you check my credential, both academically and politically, I'm one of the finest politicians in this state and the, one of, and the youngest. My bid to be governor is a generational change fight. It's not about whether Governor Baseke wants me or not. He has the right to support whoever. It's his right to support whoever, and that's why in all this rift, in all this rift, I have kept mute. I have kept mute. I refuse to make comment. Even when uh, appointees of government that are not supposed to make statement, now even make statement, negative statement, blackmail and everything against me, I refuse. I warn my people, nobody should reply. Nobody should insult the governor because I have tremendous respect for the office of the governor. I, uh, one of the fights as an activist, is we must support and strengthen institution. The office of the governor is an institution, and it must be respected. If the governor decides that he will not respect an institution, deputy governor's office, that is him. But I will not join in that fight of reducing an institution. No, 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 no. The Philip Shaibu should be separated from the deputy governor. My quest to contest for governor is not just my ambition. It's a, a generational ambition. 
and we are going to succeed. I see. And I'm going to contest under the platform of PDP. Mr. Philip Shaibu, for the brevity of time, the let, let's my name will be on the ballot. Yeah, Mr. Philip Shaibu, we have to uh, wrap it up here for the brevity of time uh, because with all the uh, fracas going on within the PDP, we can only wish you all the best mm -hmm. in, in your pursuit. Thank you for coming to Newsnight. Thank you very much.